Winter 1962. Only 15 American cities have more than three commercial TV stations. Half of the top 10 markets have no additional signals from which to choose except three network affiliates. Philadelphia, because of its proximity to other major cities and the need to separate adjacent channels, has less diversity on its TV screens than Phoenix. A law is passed by Congress that will cause big changes. It's H.R. 8031, known as the All Channel Bill. What follows is a report on how one broadcasting company has been able to offer millions of Americans greater TV diversity as a result of the conditions created by the law. A company guided by the principle, find a need and fill it. Kaiser World Headquarters in Oakland, California, passage of the all-channel bill set a plan into motion that would result in one of the largest programs for the construction and operation of new TV stations in the history of the industry. In this report, you will visit each station and see what doing things in a big way has accomplished in six of the top eight TV markets on channels that only yesterday were thought to be at best inferior and second rate. The all-channel law required that all sets be equipped to receive VHF channels 2 through 13, plus UHF channels 14 through 83. The law comes at a good time. Set production begins to soar because of color and low-cost portables. After just five years from the May 1st, 1964 effective date of the law, over 40 million all-channel sets are sold. By fall 1970, when 90% of all TV households in the top 10 markets have all channel capability, the Kaiser stations can reach one quarter of all the television households in the United States. Kaiser proves that UHF can cover a market just as well as VHF if maximum height towers with newly designed superpowered transmitters are built adjacent to the towers of network stations. It's the hardware that makes it possible to reach millions of homes but it is the programs that make the people watch. I've got to believe, what shall I do? And it's on a counter of a living It's between 8.30 and 10 on a weeknight in Philadelphia. Every night, a fresh, live color show radiates from the WKBS 1100-foot tower. It shows like this that by 1967, make WKBS the most viewed UHF station in the country, reaching more households from 9 a.m. to midnight than any other UHF station. When WKBS signs on in September 1965, only 20% of Philadelphia's households can receive UHF. By 1968, more than 80% of these 2,700,000 households can tune Channel 48, 95% by fall 1970. By 1968, the WKVS share of audience is as large as three of the four VHF independent stations in Los Angeles. Primetime audiences from 7.30 to 11, triple from 66 to 68. WKVS reaches more households than VHF stations WTCN Minneapolis and KPLR St. Louis. Channel 48. Stand by, KBS TV, Kaiser Broadcasting. Starting the studio. We're in black. Four is rolling. Take sound on four. Ready, one. Jim Vance, Channel 48 News, at the Poor People's March on Washington. Bob Wallace, Channel 48 News. Is there a drug problem in Rittenhouse Square? J. Lloyd, Channel 48 News, at a convention of a different sort. The Pope says no to the pill. I'm Doug Johnson, and this is the 10 o'clock news. At 10 o'clock, WKBS brings Philadelphia its first late evening newscast. WKBS Big News staff is giving Philadelphia a different kind of news service. A full hour in color with full local, national, and worldwide coverage. WKBS produces much of its own programming. In the children's area, there's Romper Room, Dickery Dock. Professor Schnitzel, what is it? What are you working on? friends to be here, are they? Oh, hey, they are. Oh, hey, welcome back to oh, the Dickory Dock Toy Shop. I'm Dickory Dock. This is Professor Schnitzel. <laughs> and Captain Philadelphia. 
By 1968, more children watch WKBS than any other Philadelphia station, VHF or UHF. For adults, WKBS has the woman's-oriented Dialing for Dollars movie weekday afternoons. Hip City, everybody, Junior Walk on the All-Stars. Right now, let's bring on the talented Boys and Heart. Thanks to NM Records, here's Boys and Heart doing their latest give a day. For young adults, High Lit, produced in Philadelphia and seen on all Kaiser stations. And yes, even wrestling, in of all things, living color. So as you can see, a lot goes on at the Channel 48 studios, situated on this four and a half acre site on the industrial highway, halfway between 30th Street Station and Philadelphia's International Airport. This, then, is Kaiser Broadcasting's WKBS, Philadelphia's number one independent. This is Detroit, January 10th, 1965. Only 19% of the Motor City's households can receive UHF. But after an extraordinary promotion campaign, almost every one of these sets is tuned to WKBD, Kaiser Channel 50, watching the championship-bound Red Wings. Major market UHF is born in a big way. After three years, over 68% of the sets have UHF. Adding other types of appealing programming makes Channel 50 as watched in prime time as the VHF independent in the market. For the first time in a major intermixed market, a UHF proves that it need be second to no one. WKBD tripled its average total day audience from 1966 to 1968, tripled by giving the Detroit audience what it could see nowhere else. For example, there's Lou Gordon, who hosts a locally produced program, which has made worldwide headlines more than once. As nearly 200,000 watch, a national figure makes a statement that will echo for years to come. In recent weeks, you said uh, you didn't think we should have been involved at all and that President Johnson's decision to expand the bombing wasn't going to resolve the problem. Isn't your position uh, a bit inconsistent with what it was and what do you propose we do now? Well, you know, when I came back from Vietnam, I just had the greatest brainwashing that anybody can get when you... By the general? When you go over to Vietnam, well, not only by the generals, but also by the diplomatic uh, corps over there. From the outset, WKBD promotes in a big way. And as with Lou Gordon, frank discussion programs are a hallmark of the station. From youthful and provocative Les Crane, to the first of the major TV discussion celebrities, David Suskind. And for adult entertainment, WKBD excels with the inimitable Lucy and the unflappable Perry Mason, plus a series of first-run top-flight movies with stars like Claudia Cardinal and Rod Steiger. And as with all Kaiser TV, programs for the youngsters. And total coverage 10 o'clock news round out a well-balanced schedule. Boston, fifth largest television market, is the home of WKBG, operated in partnership with one of the nation's great newspapers, the Boston Globe. Kaiser Globe also operates radio stations WJIB-FM and WCAS. The Boston Globe building adjacent to the city's major expressway is a leading example of a modern newspaper plant. Next to it is this 40,000 square foot television complex designed to give WKBG one of the most advanced television facilities on the East Coast. A new WKBG tower rises 1,200 feet above the Boston Antenna Farm at Needham, providing Channel 56 pictures to the entire Boston television market. And WKBG's five-color camera mobile unit goes on location for special events throughout the eastern seaboard. 
Havlicek. Foul on Wally Jones. Almost two years to the day after its sister station in Detroit premieres with big time sports, Channel 56 lights up screens with a live telecast of Boston Celtics basketball. Since then, some have credited WKBG with pioneering a bold new approach in play-by-play -play announcing. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? Had him standing up, and it's a foul on a trainer. 